I'm moving on now from triangles and what I have here is a pair of parallel lines marked, drawn in red and marked with the little arrows. So the two arrows on the red lines indicate that they are parallel. Uh, for a good definition of parallel, have a look in a dictionary or on a good website like Enrich. What we see formed between them at CGH and GHB are the angles alpha and beta. And if I move the point F so that I'm not touching the parallel sides but I'm moving the line EF which is known as the transversal then these two angles alpha and beta which are on the alternate sides of the transversal remain equal. So alpha and beta on alternate sides of the transversal are equal and I can move my parallel lines a little bit and I still get the same property that alpha and beta on alternate sides of the transversal are equal. You often see presented something like that with um, the angles the parallel lines appearing to be horizontal but uh, it doesn't matter at all which direction the parallel lines are going if I disappear I can't actually see the angles showing but um, any direction they form this Z shape and they're often referred to as Z angles slightly different arrangement different uh, colors this time just black and white perhaps a bit easy to see that if I move the parallel lines I've got another pair of angles that are equal I've got a transversal as well and the angles at G formed by FGD and at H formed by GHB remain equal wherever I place my transversal on the parallel lines and whichever way I have my parallel lines so this time I've got not alternate angles but corresponding angles a slightly different version of that again different colors but corresponding angles alpha and beta will be equal as long as we have a transversal the red line EF cutting the pair of parallel lines and the final thing with parallel lines this time I've marked the inside what are known as co-interior angles and if you look at alpha and beta and I'll stop on a nice round number alpha is 140 beta is 40 I can perhaps move see up a bit alpha and beta are still 140 uh, if I move A perhaps so that uh, I've now got 50 and C one move we'll C move 50 and 130 or oh, I could that doesn't look at all right does it I'm sure there's something wrong there There's something wrong there because they're not in the slightest bit like 90 degrees, are they? Okay. I'm going to take another pair of parallel lines and I'm going to add a line segment from that point to that point so that I'm crossing the parallel lines and I'm going to find the point of intersection between them if I can so I'm going to find the intersection there and there and there I'll do it again there and there 
to now create some angles. And this time I'm going to have this interior angle which is 128 and let's check 138 oh, so I'm definitely freaking wrong with that going to create another angle between these two points I didn't ask for it. I'm going to create another angle in here and I'm going to ask for I've got what I wanted I've got a, a um, not a reflex angle and I've got two 90 degree angles there if I move B one of them increases and the other decreases so that now I've got 100 degrees and 80 degrees. If I increase it, I've got 110 degrees and 70 degrees. And what we notice there is the pair of angles created by the parallel lines and the transversal, but this time the interior angles always add up to 180 degrees degrees. So these two angles, the co-interior angles, add up to 180 degrees. Finally, a typical GCSE question. We've got two lines crossing and two parallel lines and we're given the angle at B and the angle at D and we're asked to find the angle at C. Now, I'll perhaps I'll move that down a bit. If, let's move it, uh, make it a nice, um, easy angle to work with. And we'll make that 80. I've just lost that. So, the angle at B will be the same as this exterior angle at E. Because they are on corresponding sides of the transversal. So this angle, if I show its label, will also be 130. So the one at B is 130 and this is 130. Now at E we have a straight line. So if the angle on the right is 130, between them they must make 150. So this part of it will be 50. 130 from 180 leaves 50. Show the label, then it's 50. Now I'm inside a triangle. 80 and 50 is 130. 130 from 180 leaves 50. Alternatively, we could have said 80 plus the missing angle is 130. Whichever way we do it, do it, we we want the angle and we want to show the label we get 50. So now if we move it A and we'll leave it back on 50 for a moment OK, if we move A perhaps out to 70 or somewhere near 70 Again, the angles of the triangle still add up to 180 and we could have used any bit of that knowledge to find the angle missing at C. And that's a very typical GCSE question for foundation.